Hi guys, welcome back. So, I seen a new script popped up at the end of last year in Pixinsight. It's called Local Fuzzy Histogram Hyperbolization, which is quite a mouthful and doesn't really explain very much about what it's supposed to do. Um, I actually had a quick look on the Pixinsight website and saw some of the maths behind it and understood basically none of it. But I got the grasp from that and a few other articles of how to use it. So I thought last night I would give it a wee whirl at Malot 15 here. This is my HA data, probably three or four hours worth. So this fits into your process after you have stretched it and denoised. So this, this script is very sensitive to noise. And we'll actually see the effect of some of that because this image isn't, I mean, there, there is some noise there, so it's not. I haven't been terribly aggressive with my denoising. Um, so the first step you will do is to create a star mask. So all that the script really needs is the original image that you want to process and a star mask and you can adjust the settings from there. You don't need to manually add masks to the image. So usual story for creating a star mask is take a clone of your image, do an auto stretch and transfer that on using histogram transformation star mask this is my standard what I would normally go with maybe tweak some of the mask a wee bit if I, if I needed to on this one I didn't really need to and this is my star mask that I'm going to use so if I just throw that on just to show you what it looks like you know it's, it's pretty reasonable you know not bad so you don't need to don't need to apply the mask. So what we'll do is we'll just remove that again, and we will open up the script. So it's under scripts, utilities, and there you are, long big long name. So it's not a huge. I'll make that smaller. Um, there's not a huge amount of config on this one. So I'm going to pick my image, which is HA original. And that's it. Uh, pick my star mask, star underscore mask, and that's pretty much you ready to apply it. So, just as a trial, I'm going to start with 10 by 10 and linear, as I find that seems to be that seems to be a nice sort of setting for me. So it's as simple as you click the execute button, and it'll just run off, and it'll do it in the background. I have seen where this is finished, and it will say done. But no new image will pop up if you just click anywhere in the screen. It seems to just pop out. There's maybe a wee glitch in the uh, the end of the script, so it doesn't take very long. This isn't a very a very processor intensive one, I don't think. So another few seconds, and we should just see the the new image pop up, and it is quite uh, quite impressive. So that's it finished. You can see that. I'm now able to click any of these buttons, so I'm just going to close this as I don't need it anymore. So you can see the drastic difference in contrast between those two. If I just go to tile windows, you know, look at the difference there. That, that is, has made a fantastic difference. If we look in, you'll see this probably won't show it as bad, but I have some other examples that will show what it is doing to the noise and how you have to be careful. So you can see that it is bringing the noise up quite a bit, but I mean we could hit that with some denoise before would probably be best, but um, or we could correct afterwards. So I didn't go into any of the real settings there, so I'll, I'll open that up again and just show you some of the different options that are available. So image segmentation is the one I've played with mostly. And it seems to control the strength of how, how aggressive it is. So in another couple of minutes here, I'll show you 5x5, 10x10, 15x15, 20x20, and 25x25 using the linear. This is the other setting I have been playing with. So this, these have different effects. They're using a different sort of equation, is my understanding of it. So if I jump over to my next workspace, this is the original again, the same one as before. And that is linear, ran with 10x10 10 10 segmentation, sigmoid with 10x10, 10 10, Gaussian 10x10, 10 10, and normalized Gaussian 10x10. 10 10. And you can see that 
I mean, there is a drastic difference from the original, and there's they're they're fairly similar, but you can see, like you can see on this linear one, and if you look here, you can see that this is brighter. It's definitely pulled the whites up more. Um, for me, I tend to go, I try try to hold with, just just do a little bit, don't go nuts, because you find that if you over process, you end up with something that looks horrible. So. Those are the three uh, equation settings at the bottom that I showed. So the next workspace then I have actually ran through with linear. Um, this is the original again, and I did 5x5, 10x10, 15x15, 20x20, and 25x25. And just looking at 25x25, you can see what it's really doing to the noise. That I wouldn't go with that. That's it's a bit too much. So on this image, I think for me, 10x10 10 10 is probably probably the best that I've got I look at just think that's a wee bit too far 15 by 15 perhaps if you were to denoise a wee bit before you applied the process you could uh, you could go up to the 15 by 15 so that's pretty much the height of, of how to use this I've only played with it for a night or so it is very impressive so I think I will be bringing that into my standard workflow uh, I've seen it used for some of the galaxies like M33, the triangular galaxy, where it hasn't got a big defined structure, and it's good for pulling out the contrast, trying to get the uh, the arms to come out. So, thanks very much for uh, listening to the video.